So last weekend, something happened on the on the open source community that is some that looks like something that came out of a heist movie. So an exploit was found in one of the most famous open source libraries, and uh, it it this created a spiral of alerts and unfathomable amount of information that spread out of the internet. And I think we can call this the biggest code heist ever. And what is this exploit? So we're gonna talk about it and we're gonna explain how the events unfolded and how it got discovered and what we can expect from that. How's it going everyone? Come back with me on this PR review. Let's dive into it. So what is this exploit? That is a library called XZ. It's a compression library. And this compression tool was, uh, there was an exploit involved, involving meticulous malicious modifications to its own source code. So this, these modifications allowed auto unauthorized access or control to the operation system. So basically, they created a backdoor in the tool. So on this way, attack the attacker simply inserted vulnerabilities within the tool's updates, which were then distributed and used unsuspectly in different OSs. So it was a very clever way to add the backdoors. And now we're gonna discover how it happened because it was really interesting how the events unfolded. And uh, all the source of the information that is here today, uh, I got it from uh, people from the from the cybersecurity community. So I'm gonna link some sources in the descriptions that, that you can go there and look yourself uh, how this happened. So in 2021, an account called Giatan create were created on GitHub. So the early contributions were already suspicious. So they, in particular, they created API on LibreCard. So that introduced your potential vulnerability. I'm gonna show here uh, the image. So they added some uh, error text warning and uh, to a, some changes on the source code. So basically, this change was making a protected variable into an open variable. That that this can explain a lot later how the GRT activities were and how, what they are, were trying to do. So live archive is not a, is not related to XNet, but it's somewhat related because it's a, it's about is about compression as well, but because Live Archive actually supports star, gzip, zip, and rar, and other and several others. And this library is designed to be portable. And as you can see here, it can be used across uh, multiple Unix like operating systems like FreeBSD, Linux, Mac OS, and as well as Windows. So there wasn't much more information about the activity jet then in 2021. But then in 2022, something different happened. So back in April, uh, Jetan sent an apparently irre irrelevant patch. Uh, this patch was actually reverted later. But then uh, he marks the entry of another persona, one they call Jiga Kuma. Interesting because this persona was within the open source emails asking and trying to push for the inclusion of this patch on the source code of XZ and as well to the, for the addition of another maintainer. So this some, sometimes uh, explain a lot how the open source communities, they are very vulnerable for this type of people, because I've seen this happening a lot where people try to push for other maintainers to be added to some other open source projects. For example, there was an event with the Attics web, there was a library for, for HTTP service on Rust that caught, the, there was, some sort of like a, a, a some sort of a, a conversation between the maintainer and the and other people who is trying to push a pull request to this library that actually made the maintainer really unsatisfying that the way they were the conversation was going and he closed the he closed the 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 repository that that causes a lot of impacts in different companies that were using this open source library. So this is showing that uh, how uh, the maintainability of these very needed libraries are ma being made in our days on the open source community. So after that, after, after this conversation on April 2022, Jia Ten uh, made the first commitment. So this shows that it was three days after these emails. So this guy called, uh, let's see, calling was one of the, the maintainers of the, uh, the exact libraries ends up adding him as a maintainer. And then this is when uh, they made the first commit. And as well, uh, this is start uh, Gia 10 to regularly contribute to the project. And eventually it has become the second most active contributor to XZ, uh, XZ, XZ library and XZ maintainability. 
So at the same time, this guy, this Jigakuma, after 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 Jia Ten was granted as the maintainer, Jigakuma just disappeared. And another account as well called Dennis Ants was also involved to be to actually push for changes that Jia Ten was creating and also pushing for him to be added as a maintainer. He's already vanished. So like there was no more online activity of these accounts anymore. So you can see here everything ceased to 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 have any activity in 2022 so then back th then we came to 2023 so in 2023 jetan made his biggest contribution to the project at this time i couldn't see i couldn't see actually the history of the this commit because the active library actually was banned from github and i'm going to explain later what, what why why this happened but then apparently this was uh this um and generally was his big contribution that actually indicated that uh, he was well trusted by the maintainers as the maintainer of the project and then in march in march i sorry marco here but because this is what it was in march he created a pr that changed google os as first as well contact emails and introduced committees into the past infrastructure and this is going to be the basis of the exploit and you're going to you're going to see this later so in July as well, another PR on OSS first aims to hide malicious changes where you can see a focus on creating issues in order to divert attention to these vulnerabilities. So you can see that G10 was actually trying to create the XZ, uh, XZ exploit and also trying to tamper to other projects too. So in 2024, uh, back to XZ, G10 creates a pull request that changes the project URL indicating an attempt for greater control over the exact project that actually quite quite happened and uh for for what i can sell uh, what i can see what i could see from the cybersecurity community that the new url was directed to users to a different servers and the testing infrastructure was already changed so in march as well these changes uh, after these changes anomalies in the system performance lead to the discovery of the backdoor so this calls this was caused by unexpected behavior and performance problems in software that depends on libldma so or people call libsma so what you can see here what is the full picture here so to attack to create vectors on these open source libraries the the these malicious actors they often create several fake accounts and then the objective to create these several fake accounts was to push one account to be the maintainer of the open source. So one, one account is going to be the developer, where the developer will be doing changes. And if you see like, okay, so that he's just changing typos, he's just changing some sort of like a security measurements or adding more testing to the, to the, to the open source. And these changes or these patches are going to be pushed by these, uh, these other actors. They're going to be pressuring the ongoing maintainers to add these, these malicious actors as the maintainer of the open source as well. So you can see this because uh, Hans Jensen, there was another fake account. Uh, he was trying to push the, the changes, the, the malicious version of the XZ with the backdoor implanted into the Debian project, along with all the submission accounts advocated for this inclusion in other projects like Red Hat as well. So GT, GT, G10 and Liz Collins accounts were suspended for GitHub when this was discovered. And uh, with the exit com the, as a repository was, was banned as well. But this is actually problematic because Lace Collins, or I don't know how to spell his name, he actually is a victim here because he's one of the maintainers. He was actually pressured to uh, pressure to approve, uh, get this guy as a maintainer. And sometimes on the com on the commits you can see here. I think I can show you on here where you can ha you sometimes you have the author and the, the committer the committer sorry. And then this is like a, the author actually is the person who write it, and the committer is just the person who pushed that to into the source code. And because of that, Lacey it was also banned. But I think he, they fixed that. And this as well after that he do he done a lot of rollbacks on the malicious attempt and malicious code of exit and they later i think later yesterday or before yesterday they launched a new patch that actually fixed that that fixed this uh, malicious attempt 
so how the how this uh how this code was discovered and how so how this code this code was discovered before that we have to understand what is going on here so no long ago i was reading on twitter and i really need to find this paper because i saw that and i read that that some researchers on mit i don't remember it was mit of harvard or uh, stanford they were presenting a paper highlighting how you can create a, add backdoors and exploit open source projects and one of the things that were explaining on this paper was exactly what we saw here a, a uh, an account can add a, a number of unrelated unrelated pull requests and unrelated patch until you got to the moment that were when all of the patches that this malicious account wants to be pushed in they are all in place and the, when the last code is committed is then when the export of the vector is actually in effect, in effect into your source code so this is something that was written before i read this in back in 2022 beginning 2023 and i think that these accounts they they also read that and they put this to the test and actually it was very effective uh because how it was discovered it was a very clever way to add this exploit so the back door the back door was discovered on friday march 29 when a guy called anders Fron posted some odd symptoms about libsma or libzma so he was going through some uh, SSD attempts into the server and he, he saw that was failing and also he was showing that some vulgar errors was showing up on his uh, benchmarks and it was really interesting because he saw that this library was this library Libsma was using a huge amount of CPU that was something that for him was very interesting very odd and he tried to dwell deep what was going on so for and uh here is like what he was saying like the impact on the open SSH server so he was trying to do the open SSH and the, on this benchmark the the difference between uh the the further before uh, the before update of xz and after the the update of xz was actually 500 milliseconds and you know like when you see someone that complains about fps drops on on a game and they got crazy imagine this guy when he loaded a delay of 500 milliseconds on this on his benchmarks of open ssh that's a logging benchmark okay <laughs> that what this guys deserve some credit here guys because i wouldn't be able to do it i wouldn't be able to catch that that's for sure so the interesting part here is that the thing that the the thing that uh andres did he notice that the back door was not embedded right in the source code it was a series of it was a series of a meticulous plan a meticulous code execution that actually added the backdoor so to be to be to when you see that when you see, when you see like the how the code was made and and the the idea was like when the SSH was fired was 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 actually calling for this L, L Libsma and this one was part of XZ, uh, XZ2. And then this was firing up a test, a, a test, a unit test uh, so, uh, code. And this unit test code was actually bringing up some XZ files and uh, altering some source code on your machine and bring this to your bin, uh, your bin directory. And, uh, and this was make, making possible for ex to add a backdoor to your computer and then giving this attacker access to your open system. So it was a pretty much of a maze of code that was actually pretty interesting to see. And uh, look, I'm not experienced on cybersecurity, but for me it was a very clever plan. plan. But I, I I know that for the cybersecurity people, that they're gonna say that's normal. This happens all the time. But it was really interesting for me. And this was a very good catch when you see like uh, how the person could debug and uh, see what was going on. And uh, it's a, I think that I, uh, this is a thing I don't know if I could identify myself. And that thank God that we have people there on cybersecurity that do this testing and actually get this for us and discover these exploits and actually can patch this for us, <laughs> right? So what we can expect. So now that most of the issues were already patched, 
uh we can say for sure that the this attack would diminish but we have to yet to see how many how many openings were updated of this version of xset so that's why uh, Red Hat opened a severity issue where everyone has to either downgrade or update their, their libraries. And uh, it's really amazing as well that everything that happened highlights a problem on open source communities. And that's why I got drawn to it because as it, if you saw one of the two videos before, uh, I actually into now uh, posting open source code and actually contributing to open source. And that for me was interesting to see because uh, one of the most common complaints that have been seen so far that open source projects that are actually a highly a highly uh, it, it, it's part of the core of all the companies projects they often are human and developers they don't feel they are being uh compensated enough to con to contribute or maintain this project so some of these projects they have high impact so for example xz and for example the arctic web i said before and it's often overlooked by the companies that actually depends on it. So, uh, for example, the Actis app situation, Attix web situation, I don't remember was was uh, was one of these no code websites that were using this this uh, library a lot. And when the library was when the repository was closed, they was they went crazy and they're like, okay, so let then they step in and they t start taking care of putting maintainers into the project. So hopefully. For me, I, I, I wanted to see more uh, more initiatives like the GitHub sponsors and there is other other there's other institutes that look forward to sponsor these open source projects. But I feel like it still highlights how this is still is in infancy. And I feel that open source uh, maintenance when they have a something that's really a high maintenance and a high impact, they need to be incentivized to continue maintaining this project and uh yeah so i hope this getting better and i hope that something was very in, uh, insightful for you as well and what's your opinion on the open source community and these problems over the exploits and uh and what else what else i missed on this and you can add this <laughs> more context for me as well and i can redact this later so that's it for today guys and thank you very much and uh if you if you like this this channel please leave a like subscribe and uh, comment down below and share with your friends, okay? So that's pretty much it. Thank you very much. And this is your PR review. Okay.